My name is Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architects. I'm going to share with you some of my Vectorwitz projects as I'm a Vectorwitz training specialist and also provider of Vectorwitz software. I really want to just share with you some of my techniques and how I structure projects because I've shown quite a lot of architects in the past and I think they find this quite an interesting um, understanding of my projects. So let's get into this project here. This is for a new build uh, domestic extension, quite a large extension for a house that sits on a very large site. So I'm going to go up to my sheets here and show you the location plan. And as you can see, it really is quite a large plot. There's plenty of space around the building, particularly at the rear and the front. So let's scroll through to the existing block plan. So here we can begin to get an impression of some of the uh, design proposals. Um, you'll see we're extending quite a lot at the front and a little bit to the side, but we'll come on to that a bit more in the, in the uh, other drawings. We're also planting some new trees around the boundary to mitigate some of the overlooking issues that might occur from the balcony. And this was a planning requirement. So scrolling through, I'm just zooming into uh, the next scale of drawings. You can see with Vectorwitz, we're able to label up and enable uh, different size viewports, basically to blow up the same information. You can see here I've got the existing drawings, just basically drawn as um, basic 2D shapes. But we also do have the existing elevations modelled up um, and just rendered with Renderworks, a little bit of shadow. They look quite nice. So this is our existing 3D model. Uh, it's nothing too uh, sophisticated, doesn't need to be. It's really just a model so that we can essentially explore the design proposals. Um, so it is nice. It's still helpful for the client to understand how their existing space works and what the problems are. OK, so let's have a look at the design proposals. So for this particular client, they were keen to really almost double the size of the house. Um, so the main sort of areas were the new office and gym, extending the kitchen, uh, a large studio area with a larder and ensuite um, facilities, a much bigger entrance hall. That was something we were really keen on. And then a very large sort of flowing, uh, I suppose, TV, dining and living space. Up on the first floor, um, they were keen to basically extend the master bedroom and also incorporate a nice balcony overlooking the, the beautiful garden and the views in the distance. And at the front also um, have a master dressing room and a new ensuite. suite. Um, also, by losing a bedroom, that meant up on the top floor, they were keen to add um, another kind of playroom and another bedroom for the children. So here are the existing, uh, sorry, the proposed drawings. You can see again, very simply rendered. Now this one I can see does need a little bit of updating since I've last fiddled. I can see the walls poking through the roof. So all I do, I click update and essentially you'll notice the geometry uh, rendering kicking in. This is just OpenGL and I'm rendering in a very simple rendering solution. Nothing final quality or custom render works about this at this stage. Great. So we've kind of got rid of those little glitches there. Um, you can see another tool that I like to use quite heavily is the callout tool. Now this is the callout tool next to the text tool. The shortcut is option one. And essentially if I double click on that tool, you'll begin to see the notes related to that tool. And what's nice is because I've clicked place as keynote over on object info, Instead of the note actually sitting on the drawing, essentially it just sits in the key here, down at the bottom. So that's really nice. When you're creating um, a set of planning drawings, you know, you often want to kind of just annotate them with numbers or letters in order that you can kind of keep them nice and clean. So a very, very useful tool. Uh, one extra little feature I will just show you now is when you double click, you can actually go into a database of notes as well. Um, what I tend to do is have my building regs and planning notes database in here. So certain things I'm always kind of forgetting, you know, sound performance notes for building regs, a change of use notes, all these kind of notes I've built up over the years. Um, and while you do need to check them, once they're on this left side, you can sort of adapt, tweak and add to as necessary. And you can even add those back into the database if required. That's a really nice feature. Let's carry on through the sheets. So one of my sort of trademark drawings I love producing is what I call exploded isometrics. 
And I find that my clients absolutely love these. They really understand the nature of the plan, the 3D, and potentially the relationship to the external space. Um, and they tend to understand these in conjunction with floor plans an awful lot better than you would just with the floor plan alone. So these are quite easy to produce. Um, if you would like to know how to do this, let me just kind of pull off a copy of the viewport here and we'll just recreate this. So you'll probably kick yourselves when I show you how simple it is. I basically just drag that viewport up the sheet, I click layers, and I simply swap over the layer of information that I'm showing. So turn off the ground floor there and show the first floor. Click OK. Just click the update button. Uh, wait a few moments and that's now updated. Let's pull that up the drawing a little bit more. Do that one more time. We'll click layers. We'll turn off the first floor. Turn off the second floor. Click OK and then we just click update to re-render that viewport. So you can see it's pretty easy to do. And you know, once I show my clients this, often they, they kind of find this a really nice way to present um, three-dimensional views. And then all I really did was just add in a few dotted exploded lines as well. Cool. So I hope you enjoy that technique. Let's carry on through the drawings. So I'm just going to scroll down to the next one. You can see we've also got a couple of perspectives here. Um, and what tips can I give you about this one? Well, one tip would be that you do need to light them accurately from each side. Okay, so in order to achieve that, normally one of the elevations, uh, the south side is going to have the sun, and the north side is normally in shadow or a bit dark. Uh, in architectural convention, realistically, unless you're doing a true shadow study, we can kind of ignore this and basically just allow ourselves to put a light on each elevation. So, if I go to light layers, you'll see I've got a special layer for heliodons, or sunlight, if you like. And within that layer, I tend to have four classes, so four different suns, depending on which elevation I need. Um, this one is obviously the back elevation, so I just turn on the backlight. I think if I go to my next one, this one, if I click classes, you should see, there we go, we've got the heliodon back turned off now, and we've got the front one turned on. So that's all we need to do. And let me just show you that Heliodons layer quickly in top plan view. Now I've just double clicked on it. And you can see that's all it consists of, the four different lights. Uh, they don't really matter where they are, they're just simply directional lights. But as you click on them, you'll notice that they are in a particular class. Um, if any of you would like to email me, I'll happily share that file with you. No problem at all. Good, okay, so let's carry on with these sheets. Uh, we got to the perspectives. And now I'm kind of moving on to my building reg set of drawings. So all I've done here um, is essentially I've rendered a bitmap of the exploded isometric. I'll just show you how I've done that because it's quite fun. Um, okay, yeah, cool. So basically what I'm going to do is select all those viewports. I'm going to copy. And you will notice there's a really nice little command called paste in place, but more importantly, paste as bitmap. So when I paste as bitmap, I essentially get a rendered bitmap image, which I can now do all sorts of things with. I can resize it. It's pretty cool. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could double click and just show you this. I could crop it. I don't want to do this, but I could just show you. So it's quite easy to crop things directly in Vectorworks. Let's just undo that. Um, and what I did do was I basically cut that, I popped it onto my building regs sheet, and let's just paste that back in just so I can show you the effect here. And a lovely function that Vector 2019 now has is built-in image effects. So what we do, we click apply image effects, click the image effects button, and you will notice that I have the saturation um, also things like sepia tones, some really nice effects, even some sort of softish edges, um, which can look interesting. So, you know, even without using Photoshop, I can essentially apply some nice effects to my bitmaps. So a great little tip for you, you simply copy the, um, the viewports and reapply them. Now those viewports won't update 
well, they're not viewports. Those images won't update as if they were viewports. So if it's important for you to keep them updated, then do the viewport option. Okay, so this drawing is really about essentially comparing the existing and the proposed. And what I'm trying to do here is overlay the existing building and the proposed building. So it makes it very clear what the new design proposal is all about. You can see in red any demolitions that are uh, expected by the contractor. So it's very, very helpful. That's just done with the class. And all I do is I move part of the wall into the class and then it takes on those graphical attributes. As I say, you can see it is quite a large extension. I think we worked out it was pretty much doubling the size of the building. So we were quite pleased to get this for, for planning. Um, using viewports, I've just decided that it might be useful to have a separate 1 to 50 sheet. And because the building doesn't fit at 1 to 100 scale, it's easily done. I just copy the same viewport and double click it, crop, uh, put a crop in. That's fine. I can sort of crop it wherever I like. And let's just escape that. And basically, I can just piece back the building in two parts. So that might be helpful at A3 scale for the for the builder to quote from. Now, I think the drawings that I personally really love, and I'm beginning to just get these developed at the moment, are things like the sections. So I want to talk about those for a moment. You can see uh, the firstly thing, thing is I have a key plan here. So this is a little viewport, and it's just a plan at 1 to 500 scale. Now, I've named that key plan. You can just name a viewport down here at the bottom of the object info palette. What that means is when I click onto an elevation or section, I can essentially scroll down and within the options I have section line instances. So I can show them on the design layer, but I can also go to viewports and I can essentially tick the viewport that I would like them to apply to, key plan. That then will put in the annotation space, if I double click into annotations, it's very neat, this will put in to annotations one of the section markers. And I have to say what is extremely nice is if I move this section marker, you will notice that the viewports will update dynamically to reflect the new position of the section. Now that's a perfect example of, of 3D and BIM coordination. Another little interesting thing that I wanted to show you was how I've achieved this slightly greyed out effect here. So you can see the line work is greyed out when it's further away. So all we do here, we go to advanced properties and you'll notice that I've created under attributes, I've created a special class for anything that is behind the section. It's called section behind. And if I was to edit the graphics of that class, you would notice a light gray pen. So anything that goes in that class, anything beyond the section plane, um, will have that lighter gray pen. And that makes it a lot easier to, to read the section. Now, I love the fact that I can cut sections through quite a lot of positions in the model. Um, I can maybe spot glitches or things in the model that haven't yet been resolved. This is a really nice little section through the balcony and begins to sort of show the relationship between the stairway and the volumes inside through the circulation. So let's move along. You can see here we've got a section taken through the master bed, but also through essentially looking as an elevation into the drawing. And this is a really, really helpful um, drawing. In fact, I know that if I click up date on this one. I think we've put um, some ceiling ties in and I've probably kind of extended that ceiling back a little bit. So you can see it's just resectioning the model for you. It takes a few moments um, and I've annotated it quite a lot with different notes for the engineer who's going to be working on this project. So that's going to just update any second. Hopefully what we're going to see here is a ceiling now imported um, Let's have a little look. It's just re-rendering. Now this will depend on the speed of your machine. That's why um, more processing power is, is better for the BIM workflow. Um, I'm running a MacBook Pro, so it's a decent computer. It's not the fastest iMac or a, you know, a new 8-core MacBook Pro, um, which I'd love to have, to be fair, because that would speed up. But you can see we've got the new tie-in, um, and that's obviously going to allow us to put some tie beams in there. So that's great. I'm going to scroll down through. This was another section that I did just today, actually. 
um, we were looking at the kind of um, relationship between the VLUXs and also the ceiling in this new master bedroom. So I could explain to the engineer what I was hoping to achieve. Here again is the section key marker. So I found these drawings really useful. These were kind of like cutaway, uh, just exploded isometrics of simply the first floor and its relationship to the second floor up in the roof space. Um, just to really show, you know, it is a bit tight, but that's a kind of loft conversion for you. Um, and really just to show you how the double height space worked in the master bedroom. So that was really interesting. You know, using the 3D model, I'm just going to show you that model now, was enabled me essentially to you know, zoom and whiz around the model in real time. So let's turn off the clip cube to start with. And let's turn the roof on. Okay, so here is our model. Turn the clip cube off. Here is our model of the proposed house. Um, I'm using different colours on the walls just to kind of emphasise what's existing, this slightly beigey colour, and what's new, the whiter render here. So it just gives you a bit of an impression um, in the viewport, at least, what is new and what's existing. So you can see pretty sizable new extension. But let's click on to the clip cube and let's just have a look at a few sections of the model. So if I kind of go through slowly, I'm going to hold the squiggle key down on the keyboard between shift and Z. I call that the squiggle key or tilde key. And this will enable me to go nice and slowly without snapping. So that's quite a nice section. Just kind of through those stairs. Um, it kind of explains quite a lot about the project and the relationship of the space coming up into the loft, just about sort of checking your head heights and making sure everything's going to work. I really do find this extremely helpful. Um, looks like that stair needs a bit of adjustment, I think, because of a, a lower floor height there. In fact, I could probably do that now. Let's have a look. I think it's 2700. Let me click OK. And you should see, brilliant, that stair has now adapted itself. So, you, you know, you're always sort of spotting different things that you wouldn't see otherwise on a set of 2D drawings. And I have to say, it's a very, very interesting way to design. Um, I can section this in multiple ways. And if I really want to capture that as a section, I highlight the face. I right click, create a section viewport. And then I can essentially put it onto one of my existing sheets or I can create a new sheet. Let's do that. Let's call this Drawing 32 Section E, I believe. I'll click OK. I've used that number. Let's just call it 32A. And I can choose the uh, rendering DPI. Now that really only applies for rendered viewports, not uh, graphical vector ones. So if you're doing hidden line, it just doesn't matter at all. And we've got a whole bunch of options in here, but I'm just going to kind of click advanced properties and the only thing I'm going to do is turn on the detail and click OK. Fine, let's click OK. That'll take a moment or two to uh, render up. You can see the section preparing itself now. But the great thing is these kind of drawings um, take a long time to do by hand. They take hours in fact and they're always kind of changing. So as soon as you spot something and you need to change a floor or a ceiling height, move a window or a door, you're always having to go back round again and double check um, if these sections are actually up to date. So, you know, it might take a moment to, to do the re-rendering, but you're going to see a really nice looking section, hopefully, and essentially, well, it will be up to date. It will be coordinated to the model. That is one of the key advantages of the BIM workflow. So here we go. We're just about to render that section up now. Hopefully it's going to look nice on the sheet. Fantastic. Yeah, I th I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'll just show you how I did the greying out again once again. I go Advanced Properties. I simply pop down to Objects Beyond Cut Plane, Use Class, and I just pop down to my predefined class, which has a lighter grey plan. So you can see that really is a bit more readable and looks extremely nice. And actually quite a useful section that I can use, and then I can pick off some details as needed. Okay. So hopefully you're getting the idea of how this uh, project's come together. Um, the really nice thing also with the clip cube now on the latest version of Vectorworks is we can do some really interesting sections. Um, I'm going to go for this one, put it into perspective view. Okay, let's spin that around. That's looking really interesting. 
and I can even create that as a viewport. So rather than doing a section viewport, I just simply do view, create viewport this time. Let's go and put it onto a brand new sheet. Uh, let's just call this 33A, just for the sake, and let's call this um, section per perspective. I'm going to go for 200 DPI. I'll click OK. And at the beginning, it doesn't look like it's done the sectioning. But when you actually click on the update button, I'm just going to turn off the planar stuff, by the way. And that means all the 2D information, like the dimensions, disappear. So when I click update, I bet it will simply re render the viewport and kind of impose, if you like, the clip cube on that viewport. So this is a really nice way to get sectional rendered perspective viewports into your drawing. And this was something that the previous versions of Vectorworks just couldn't do. So it's just going to take a second longer. There we go. And it's really nice. And it tells me a lot about the project. And as I've said before, what is quite nice is I can apply the image effects directly to a viewport. Uh, let's just go for it. Let's take that saturation down, click apply. And that will constantly update as I re, you know, regenerate the, uh, the design. Okay. So you can definitely see I've got a few issues here with the roof that need to be resolved. That's just because I, I didn't adapt that yet in the model. But now I've done that section, I'll be able to spot it. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed um, having a look at one of my projects. Um, if there's any more things, I'm going to try and show you that on some, some future projects as well. But for now, um, that's all I've got to show you on this particular project. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see some more videos. And I'd love to share some more projects with you. So please hit that subscribe button now. Many thanks. Bye bye.